everyone, my name is Zar and with us is architect Rudyard Cinco, the man, <laughs> and John Bernante. We are Acero Trading and Services. So we are here in an undisclosed area somewhere in northern Cebu. So the weather is nice and it's a perfect time for us to show you our concrete polishing. So this is a DIY tutorial video for those of you guys who like to learn about polished concrete and how to start so this one is for you by special request with many okay so watch this video and architect Rudyard here is your guy to contact if you have projects like this one okay so stay tuned congratulations mr Rudyard Singo woohoo <laughs> Okay, uh, for those of you who want to venture and start out with grinding, you can first use or buy a 4 inch grinder like this from Bosch and select the one with the variable speed because basically you will be needing the variable speed uh, for polishing and grinding a concrete. If you use a single speed, you will have a hard time controlling the grinder. At the same time, you will emit a lot of dust. Okay, so again, grinder, 4 inch variable, you can buy this at the local warehouse. For the first cut in concrete polishing, you do first a metal grinding uh, cup wheel. This is a 4 inch um, for this size of grinder. You can buy this again from the local hardware. So this is a turbo cup wheel like this. And you also need a series of recent pads with different grits so normally if you want to polish concrete you'll start first with 30 50 100 200 400 800 1000 if they have or you can go straight to 1500 and 3000 grit 3000 grit is a high gloss uh, finish okay for 30 grit it removes the scratches out from your cup wheel for this to be installed to your grinder you also need something like sorry this one this is called a backing pad make sure you have the right size for four inch grinder normally this comes in four inch that goes to the spindle and you can stick your resin pads to this backing pad for us since we've already been into this business for years already we will be using Hilti DGH 130 thank you very much Hilti Philippines the good thing about this grinder is that it has a dust rod built in and it's adjustable you can adjust the height of your dust rod enough to have a minimal length of your cup wheel or a resin pad that goes through your surface the best thing about this is you can connect this again to your vacuum and you control the dust that's uh, being extracted from the concrete floor and concrete table like this one we have our backing pad and we will be using Hilti resin pads for the first few cuts 50 100 and for the finishing touches we'll be using our very own proprietary resin pad that goes into sequence from 0 1 2 3 and 4 and 4 is a high gloss finish 3 is a semi gloss finish 2 is a semi matte 1 is matte and 0 is used to remove the scratches that we generate out from this metal cup wheel. This is also a variable speed grinder. We also have a 7 inch Bosch variable speed polisher that we will be using to stick our resin pads for the polishing process. And lastly, we burnish. So, we have a burnishing pad and a backing pad here. Uh, we've had it custom made out of aluminum. So this burnishing pad will be the last and final step for us to achieve 
a very smooth, very shiny result. So Chan Boy in a while will be demonstrating how you can do polishing on a concrete table like this yourself and you can try this out at home. Safety is always first. Make sure you have the proper gear, proper PPE. You need to protect your eyes for any particles that go through the air. You need to protect your respiratory system. So make sure you have a proper respiratory protection for the job. And Chan Boy here is wearing the appropriate type of gloves. It's already connected to the vacuum and he is now ready to grind. For enclosed areas where there is enough noise, so you need to have an earplug. But here it's outdoor, weather is fine. No compound now um, you can hit comment and I'll send you the link or you can buy it from us also what this one is best thing about this is it's paintable so basically you can uh, match the color uh, of the concrete or whatever it is uh, that you wish to achieve maybe a red or a blue or yellow or black or gray you can actually tint this one together with the hardener the good thing about this is the workability for this it dries out and hardens in 20 minutes so for this project especially uh, we don't have that much time so we'll be using this one but you can also use a grout like a portland cement you can mix them and patch the crack so it depends upon you but if you want to use this product comment below and I'll tell you what it is, I'll get you the link and you can also buy it from us. Make sure you clean them first before applying the patch to have a very good adhesion. So take a look at the condition of this uh, table and bench right now. So basically we've already exposed the aggregate so it has the character already. But since this is still the first cut, we'll try to patch it out during our first cut before we progress. minutes has passed our uh, patch is already cured it's already hard so now Chan Boy is preparing for the next step it's honing process it's number zero we will be using our seven inch variable speed polisher grinder by Bosch so preparing for this one this is a pro tip you make sure that when you finish with number zero or the next process you need to ensure that all the scratches that you get from the cup wheel is removed from this process otherwise if you don't do this now if you don't check you will end up you know uh, seeing a lot of scratches as you progress and the only way to get those scratches is to go back to this process again so again very very 
um, critical is to make sure all the scratches from the metal bonded cup wheel um, you need to make sure that after this process before you progress you make sure that you remove them out and you won't see them you only see the scratch from this resin glass you will eventually take time to practice and you can identify from which process are the scratches coming from but basically with our experience most of the time the scratches that uh, comes out when we progress are from the initial metal banded diamond grinding process in which from the cup wheel to this particular project right here. Again, please make a protein. Right, Mr. Chanboy? Okay. from our metal bonded cup wheel um, it's already removed from our first resin pad so right now the most important thing to do for a polished concrete is to densify your concrete because once you remove the top layer you will expose the aggregate and also it makes your concrete very porous so what this densifier will do is to make sure that these pores are filled in it hardens your concrete and it also acts as a dust proofer so you won't be able to have a lot of dust coming out from your surface and we have our own um, nano lithium densifier it's a highly concentrated the good thing about this uh, densifier uh, from the rest in the market is that you can dilute this up to three times its volume so basically you will save one from logistics cost and uh, storage space so we have prepared a small amount to cover this area, actually it's more than what's uh, needed for this area and Chan Boy will be preparing the dilution with water. So Chan Boy, do the honors. Okay, so for this, because this is a manual job mix, so we're just gonna be diluting one part of our densifier and two parts of water so you steer this you can use a stick but for us we use our own steerer just to make sure it's uh, homogeneous and to apply our mix we need to have a microfiber cloth so for this one the mop You need to make sure that the surface of the concrete is very clean you can have vacuum or wipe it off or blow it out just to make sure all the impurities on your surface is removed and by the time you do that and you start you already have your nano lithium densifier ready and you can now apply and densify the surface so, can boy do the honors please Right, so once you apply the densifier, you make sure that if it quickly absorbed, you have to reapply that again and uh, ensure that you have like a uh, a film of this stays for about five to ten minutes. If you see it being absorbed and becomes quickly dry, you have to apply it again before it completely dries out. So this will ensure that your concrete have absorbed. Uh, equal amount of densifier from the surface up to a certain depth Make
our polishing steps. So we'll go with number one first, number two, number three, and number four. Okay? And you'll see our table, the surface of our table come out shinier as we go through the steps. So what we're uh, planning to do here is to have the top surface and high gloss, which is number four, and the sides will be matte. The number one. Number one complete, so this is matte finish, and this is how it looks like. You can see we now have a bit of luster already. And that's ATS number one matte finish. Alright, well tip number two. The reason why we recommend to use a viable speed grinder is that the people progress you increase the speed of your variable speed grinder. Now, if you use a single speed grinder, it will be very, very difficult for you guys to control, you know, the, your stroke as it has a very high RPM and it vibrates a lot. So a variable speed grinder can help you control the stroke when you are grinding. So again, pro tip number two, as you progress, you also increase the speed of your variable speed grinder. Right, this is ATS number two, semi matte finish. Semi matte finish. So, as you can see, you now have a much better luster on your surface than the matte finish. Okay, pro tip number three. Before you start progressing to the next grip, you make sure you clean the area as the cuttings collected from your uh, resin pads may scratch the surface if you don't clean them and you start progressing to the next step. So that's pro tip number three. Clean before you start progressing to the next step. So many things for my attention So I shift my gaze in your direction Yeah, I look to you, God Oh, even when the clouds are rolling in Yeah, I live for you, God Oh, even when my world polishing uh, process using our grinder but we're not done yet so what we're gonna do with this finish now as you can see it's very shiny but if you don't protect this surface eventually the luster will be off in few months maybe so what we're gonna do is we will apply a protective um, treatment we call it hydrolock treatment good thing about this hydrolock treatment is it's designed to be a waterproofing grade so it waterproofs your your surface and uh, the some some of the thickness of this uh, slab 
But then this one is non-film forming. So this is integral. So meaning this one penetrates deep to the surface of your concrete, not leaving any thin film behind. Because what others will do, they will apply a micro coat sealer, which will eventually scrape off and, uh, and will uh, scratch from the surface. Others, they use floor wax, which is for us a no-no because floor wax, they, they invite a lot of dust. But also floor wax will also discolor your surface over time you re reapply floor wax. So the good thing about this, again, it's integral. Meaning the more you use, the more it's subjected to use, especially in floorings, the more it's subjected to foot traffic, the shinier it gets. So Chan Boy now will be agitating our hydrolock treatment. By the way, we don't apply water onto this one. This is a pure hydrolock treatment only. So you can steer, but we'll use our own steer. To apply this, then you also need a microfiber cloth. So same as you apply your densifier, you need to make sure that once it dries out, uh, it's quickly absorbed. So you need to apply it again and make sure it's saturated but not funded. Okay, so our hydrolock treatment is already dried out and it's already into the surface. So we will be doing our hydrolock water integrity test. This is water. We know it's a whole thing. It's a problem, but I don't think it. And we'll have architect with your Singo to do the honors of testing this by pouring into our concrete here water. This is an onion. Woo! Yay! So, as you can see, guys, um, the treatment. No, um, did this job. It's a waterproofing treatment. So it's easy to clean. That's the best part of it. When it rains, so the rain will easily clean this one out. And one of the things also, especially if you're in places like near the beach, this is also very important treatment because it protects your concrete from easily getting deteriorated out from the salt water and algae growth as well so especially this outdoor so you need to make sure that this one will stay as it is as it looks like for many years or perhaps a lifetime without algae growth okay so the last step we'll be doing is the burnishing basically after you do the treatment so you will have to burnish the area the, the surface so you will have a much more lustier look and if you don't have a burnishing pad like this it's called gorilla pad or a hog's hair you can use a white pad that's uh, for polishing and you can cut it off to the size of your packer pad and that boy now will be doing the burnishing of our surface and that's the last
you very much for staying with us at this far. I know the video is very long. And I hope you've learned something and that we have imparted our experience with you. Just please keep on practicing and just remember that Acero Trading and Services started with just one grinder. Until now, uh, we are tasked to do all the floor of this uh, DIY Home Depot store. So keep practicing, keep learning, and hope to see your videos also in the not so very distant future. So thank you very much. God bless. And keep safe. Cebu Pacific flight 5G646 bound for Cebu City is now departing from the airport of Manila. Steward Beso. Actually, uh, cut. 